Hi guys. So today I'd like to talk to you about um, picking the right orchid or a healthy orchid at, a, a, let's say, like a grocery store or online or um, wherever you can actually see the actual plant that you're going to purchase. Um, so first off, I want to say um, look for looseness near the base of the plant that you're going to purchase. Um, you do not want looseness to occur at the base, whether it be um, from the pseudobulbs, if you're picking that variety of orchid, or um, from like the base of like a Phalaenopsis, for example. You want... For, well, the, I don't know, my lighting's kind of bad, but you want it to be, you could see it, maybe this one, you want it to be like, like firm in the potting mix, and don't play around with it too much, because um, you don't want it to become loose because you're touching it, but just keep in mind, like, you just don't want the looseness because um, it could be, it could have been potted incorrectly um, or there could be a possibility of rot or unhealthy roots. Um, and if it is loose and you happen to buy it, just repot it and see how it goes because um, it could have just been that they potted them fast and they just did a poor job with potting because it's it was like a corporate you know business but anyway the second point that I have to make is healthy roots you want to make sure the roots of the plant are light green when dry and dark green when wet and if that well those are like the healthy characteristics of roots and you want to make sure that the roots of the plant are not shriveled and tan in color because those indicate dead roots and the roots are the most important part or are considered to be the most important part of the orchid because they are what they are they absorb the water that nourishes the plant. And three, look for the leaves of the plant or look at the leaves of the plant. Um, you want to look for thick, lightly colored leaves. For example, these leaves, if you could see them, are they're quite light in color. Like this, my film doesn't really do justice, but they're um, like a light green color. Whereas um, you don't want to buy a plant that has like yellowish leaves or really dark leaves, even though if it's easier to reverse really dark leaves because all you have to do is just you know, expose it to more sunlight. Maybe that's what it needs, but just look for, and also look for uh, if there are spots or blemishes or even mushy spots in the leaves because um, though that could indicate like a mold or a parasite or something that you really don't want to bring into your house, especially if you have other orchids. Uh, I recently just had a virus go through a few of my orchids and it killed them. <laughs> and it was just from exposure to one new orchid that I brought home. So be careful. <laughs> and um, I mean, there are certain like molds that you could treat and I'll make another video about that. But um, it if you find out that your orchid has like black spots, let's say, on its leaves. Um, there are certain things that like that that could possibly be fixed. But just 
if you're going to buy a plant with that, just don't buy a plant that has that because you don't want to deal with issues, especially if you have other orchids. And also make sure that the pseudobulbs, if you're picking a variety of orchid that has pseudobulbs, um, are plump and like full. For example, uh, I'm so sorry about my lighting. I don't have good lighting in my house. But these, here, can you see it? But these, you can look at my other video too. It had better lighting. But these pseudo bulbs are um, you, not like you just want to have pseudo bulbs that are not shriveled or, or like wrinkly. You want to have ones that are full and um, <laughs> just not wrinkly. <laughs> but. Uh, that could, shrivelly pseudobulbs could be an indicator of dehydration or some other issues. So, try not to buy any with shrivelly bulbs. Um, try not to also buy plants with the blooms all opened. That's kind of just like a personal preference sort of thing, but, um, when you buy them all open, you're not going to enjoy the flowers for very long because um, they're soon, probably. I mean, I know that it is true that orchid flowers do bloom for two weeks or more, or, you know, up to like three weeks at a time or more. But if they're already all opened, you're pro likely not to enjoy the plant for as long as if you buy one that still has some that are closed because those ones that are closed will once they open they'll be open for a couple weeks if you're lucky so and then once the flowers die off usually you don't get them to flower for a while so it's kind of nice to just have uh some of the flowers not opened when you buy them because it just is so nice to have the flowers bloom for, or just blooming. Like this one I just got, my little Tony Opsis. Um, I made another video about that. But it has three flower spikes. One of them is opened. And then two of them are still closed. This one's starting to open up a little bit. But yeah. Anyway. And potting media, as for the, like, the potting media that your orchid comes in, it is, like, important to, I mean, if you're not, uh, comfortable with repotting them, um, or, yeah, if you're not comfortable or you're giving it to someone as a, you know, gift or something, it's nice to make sure that the potting media is the right one for the plant that you are buying or the species. Um, but if you are comfortable with repotting them, that's, I mean, that's not much of an issue, I guess. You could just, um, well, cut off the flower spike and um, repot it or wait till it's done blooming and then repot it into the proper mixture or potting media but it's good to know like what they potted it in at first um like for example my phalaenopsis it's phalaenopsises like to be potted in um like a medium-sized pine bark media and um I ha that's what it's in right now but I really need to repot this guy been in that for a long time but for example like if you go so when you go buy a phalaenopsis it's good to know that like they're it, that it was potted in like a pine bark or if it's potted in like just moss I don't know if that's very good I think you should you know have more of a mixture 
more of a porousy mixture. Um, what else? And also, I just want to add that um, it's kind of nice to know when you're buying an orchid uh, the name of the orchid you are buying. Uh, you don't. You kind of. You should stay clear and not buy orchids that just are tagged as orchid or exotic orchid because you don't know anything about that plant. You'd have to go look it up, and um, it's also just um, like you want to buy an orchid from a good seller, one that knows like about the plants and um, you want to make sure that the seller is uh, selling quality plants so it's good to know like the species the you know like genus species even of the planet like the scientific name common and the common name so you just know that like you could go look it up and research it, research what they like, and how to keep it surviving. But, yeah, um, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, sorry my lighting was so bad. Uh, I, I, I could refilm this, but I think I'm just gonna keep it the way it is, because it's the information that you need, not the in examples, really, because it's when you go and, but I could repost it if you want. <laughs> just let me know in the comments. But, and also just let me know if you have any other questions and uh, if I didn't explain anything or everything correctly or, flu or fluidly, just let me know and I could solve your problems. And yeah. Good luck with your orchid searching <laughs> and buying, and comment and subscribe. Bye.